I have two nearly identical DSLR here, but one of these is far superior for astrophotography, and I'm going to tell you why. Angus Wong here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go over why I think having an astro modified and specifically a hydrogen alpha modified DSLR is far superior than a bone stock DSLR from factory. Um, I first want to go over what a astro modified DSLR is, why we do it, and then Three of my main reasons why I think having an astro modified camera makes a lot more sense. And, you know, obviously when it comes to benefits, there are, of course, some drawbacks. So let's get into it. So, what is an astro modified DSLR? Um, to keep it short and without going into the specifics, an astro modified DSLR simply has an internal filter that was designed to block out red light removed or replaced with a clear glass um, and they do that because hydrogen alpha which is the most abundant gas in the universe emits a red light so therefore by having that internal filter uh, inside your camera it's going to block off a lot of the hydrogen alpha response so you can either do the modification yourself either remove or replace the filter or you can have a professional do it for you or you can buy one that is already astro modified. So I can think of three main reasons why an astro modified camera makes a lot of sense for beginners. Um, the first real reason is the price and the value you get out of it. Um, so when you're looking for uh, an Astro modified camera, especially an older Canon, um, one, you can either do it yourself, uh, that would be the cheapest route, but that's also the scariest route, and um, ask me how I know. Um, <clears throat> or you can buy one that's already modified on a used forum, or you can buy from a uh, reputable uh, service dealer, um, or you can send your bone stock camera to the same reputable service dealer and have them modify for you. But either way, if you're looking for an Astro modified camera, try not to spend more than $400. Uh, and also within that $400, I cannot think of another upgrade that will give you more value, more performance than an Astro modified camera. Uh, secondly, the second reason why this makes a lot of sense is because the ease of use. Now, if you've done this hobby or if you try this hobby, you would realize that ease of use, ease of operation actually comes at a premium. So consider this, you're making an, uh, a massive upgrade to your photos, but you're using the same form, function, form and function of a common DSLR. So there's no learning curve here. Um, and you can't say that with any other upgrade. <laughs> in this hobby uh, and I think most people considering getting into this hobby or are already doing a hobby knows how to use a common DSLR. The third main reason is the performance. I believe that a properly modified uh, DSLR can approach the performance of a dedicated astro camera. Now I said approach because it's not going to match it simply because this is still a DSLR at its core. It does not have active cooling. So on those longer exposure, you will still deal with the thermal noise that you get out of a normal DSLR because there's no active cooling. But if you can avoid that thermal threshold, I think a natural modified DSLR can approach the performance of a dedicated astro camera. 
for a fraction of a cost. Uh, dedicated astro cameras are usually, you know, close closer to a thousand dollars. You can get one of these depending on your method and your route, anywhere from one hundred dollars to four hundred dollars. So, those are really compelling reasons. But the main drawback of having an astro modified camera is the fact that your daytime photography will suffer because remember you we removed that internal filter that was designed to block off the red light. So all of your daytime photos, unless you add an additional filter or you mess with the white balance, which I don't know how, all of your daytime photos will have a reddish tint to them. Um, so you should consider that. So if you're a daytime photographer, I recommend you getting a second DSLR body, body cheap one, an old one and modify that one um, because once you modify a uh, DSLR uh, it will be very difficult to have daytime photography and I'll post some pictures around here or maybe I've already done that uh, I don't know I'll, I'll edit it in the video um, but now that I've gone over the three main benefits the uh, the price the ease of use and the sheer performance and the main drawback of uh, you know, not being able to do daytime photography. I'll go over the, uh, the plan for the night. So with the remaining amount of sunlight left, I want to quickly go over my plans tonight. Um, I'll be using my uh, Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro paired with my trusty William Optic Space Cat 51. Um, this is a great setup because it's light, it's portable. Um, I can get it running quickly and I'll be using my, uh, my Optimal L Pro, which is a general purpose broadband filter. And I chose that filter because I want to make sure that I can have short exposure and I wouldn't have to auto guide with short exposure. And I can use it with my um, Star Adventurer Pro. And my plan tonight is to make sure that my camera setting are identical between the two cameras uh, and I will try to aim for maybe two hours each uh, between the Canon T2i and Canon 60D so therefore my comparison will be as fair as possible and yeah that's about it and I'm going to uh, set up and hope that the night will stay clear but it's already getting chilly so that's a good sign. Uh, that's usually how it works in my neighborhood. When it's cold, it's gonna be clear. One more thing I want to mention about me using the uh, Star Adventurer Pro is because I want to keep myself ready for the next comment. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher the name, but it's something something Leonard, and it's supposed to be here um, around Christmas time of 2021. So I have the next 
10 months to keep my skill sharp for uh, star hopping. So when the comet is here, I would be able to go out on the field on the dark side and um, look for the comet and hopefully try to take a picture. All right, let's go over the results. Although this was probably the easiest comparison I've ever done. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't even know if I need to talk because as soon as I show you the images, um, it will be very evident as to which camera wins. So let's uh, go over what, what I actually did that night. I ended up having to use a shorter exposure time because, and this is going to sound really funny because here I am telling you guys to upgrade your DSLR, but my <laughs> upgraded DSLR is showing signs of failure. Um, I think it's just getting old and you know, the amount of images, the, the, the amount of imaging that I've done in the past six months will probably equate to a typical usage of six years in a span of six months. So, um, but it is, it is giving me a lot of heat related issues right now and I cannot reliably use my Canon 60D HA modify anymore for long exposure. So I, I had to use a shorter exposure. Um, so I ended up with doing a 40 seconds, um, ISO 1600. And I mashed that with my stock Canon T2i. Now, at 40 seconds, the horse head and flame is not going to look is not going to look impressive. But I think that's actually great for this comparison because, you know, it's it's one thing for me to show you great images, but it, I think it's another. It tells even it tells even more of a story if I can demonstrate the vast difference with a not so good image. Because at 40 seconds, you know, you're not really going to see much details with the horse head and flame. But let's go on with the uh, images, shall we? So I want to start with just the raw file, uh, straight out of the camera, no processing, no stacking. And, you know, between the Canon T2i, which is bone stock, and the Canon 60D, which has been HA modified, um, already with the raw file. Uh, I hope that YouTube doesn't ruin these these images, but you know I can see a big difference already just with the raw file. Now, <clears throat> I ended up uh, being able to take about two hours or close to two hours of uh, imaging time for the horse head and flame between both cameras. So here's the histogram of the stacked image. And as you can see, if you look at the red channel between the bone stock and the astro modify, there is already more red channel that is available for me to use. Just looking at the histogram of the, of the final stacked image. And now I will show you the processed image. Um, and, you know, like I said, at 40 seconds, um, the image is not going to look great. You can probably barely make out any details with the horse head and flame nebula. And this was the case with the bone stock DSLR. Um, even at close to two hours, uh, at 40 seconds exposure, there is just not a whole lot of detail that I can pull out because it is a you know, most nebula are going to be fairly faint. So, and this was the case here, 40 seconds, barely anything. Um, I can kind of make out the flame, but I definitely cannot confidently say that I can make out the uh, horse head. Um, however, when I show you the Canon 60D, which has been HA modified, same 40 seconds, same ISO setting, uh, around two hours of imaging time, you can see, <clears throat> first of all, the flame is well-defined and even at 40 seconds, I can see and make out the outline of the horse head. And if you look at between the two pictures, uh, there's no comparison. Um, 
the Astro Modify, in this case, HA Modify, beats out the bone stock camera when it comes to imaging nebulae. Uh, because like I said, it's, it's able to, to pull in a lot more of the hydrogen alpha gas. So, I mean, that's why I think that I don't need to say a whole lot. Um, in conclusion, get your camera and get it Astro Modify because number one, it doesn't cost a whole lot of money. Number two, it's extremely easy to use because you haven't changed the form and function of it. You just made it more sensitive to hydrogen alpha. Number three, look at the pictures. Um, there's no comparison between a bone stock and an Astro Modify camera. And with that, now I need to sort out what I'm going to do with this thing because I can't really use it anymore for, uh, for any long exposures. So I will figure that out. And until next time, uh, take care. Don't give up, but look up and clear skies. See you guys. Yeah.